And we're back. We are Welcome back. Welcome back, Liz. Thanks, Russ. You too. So this is episode 30, episode 30 for the author adventure. And we are here sharing the uh, five secrets to success that every uh, author should know. Uh, if they don't know, they should know these things. And, um, you know, Russ and I always try to give you a tip here up front because this is about the art and business of publishing. And so we want you to know these secrets so that you too can be successful in your author adventure. So I think today, Russ, we're maybe going to share something about maybe why email is so important. I think email, because a lot of people think that, um, you know, we're all busy. We all have, you know, things going on in our world. And, you know, social media is so prevalent that some people forget that email is still incredibly powerful. And the reason it's powerful is because you actually have control over it. That is your list. That is your relationship. That's your ability to communicate and collaborate with the individuals in your in your environment. And the reality is, is as an author or, or anybody that is, you know, expanding your, your mission and, and your message, you really need to have something that you can actually communicate with to nurture, to build, and communicate with those uh, individuals in your and in, in, in the ones you're building relationships with, and email is the most powerful tool to do that one on one. And I just I want to I want to refresh that idea with everybody here today because it's important to understand that when you go to social, you know it's great to have lots of followers, likes, and you know all that all of that stuff. However, you don't have the opportunity, and if there's something happened and, and you get dropped or they, you know, change the rules, and all of a sudden you don't have the same level of connection and communication with those individuals. Yeah. So it's really important. And, and Liz, I know that you've, uh, you know, grown your list and continue to grow your list. And there's things we can do to grow our list. However, having a list is the most important piece of that puzzle. So if you want to learn more, you want to investigate this further, please reach out to us and allow us the opportunity to help you grow your list and actually your influence with your with your book. So Liz, what do we got on, on the agenda today? Well, I'm of course just delighted today because this is, uh, we're having uh, co-authors, Burke Merchinson and Michael Granberry on, and they have a wonderful book called Hole in the Ceiling, which is all about the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm a native Dallasite. There aren't that many of us. <laughs> but I was born and raised here in Dallas. My cousin actually played for the Cowboys under Tom Landry. And so um, obviously that's the Cowboys have always been close to our heart. So let's bring Burke and Michael up and talk to them about this uh, great story. Because not only is it a sports story, it's a business story. It's a story about the history of Dallas and the history of America's sport and America's team, which became the Dallas Cowboys. So. Well, let's bring him on because uh, we lost Burke there for a minute, but he's back and yep. and uh, we'll keep it going. So, uh, uh, Dad. hey, Liz, uh -huh. I have I have one correction to make. Uh -huh. okay. The title is "Hole in the Roof." In the roof. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. Hole in the roof. Yes. So we've got uh, we've got the book cover, which will show up here in a little bit, and we have the Amazon link and all of that. So we'll be we'll be showing that, but. But tell us, uh, tell our listeners kind of, you know, how did y'all partner up? Why did you want to write this story? Why did you want to tell this story? Because like I say, there are, there are a lot of, uh, there were a lot of pieces to this story words there, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm going to defer to Burke on this one. This was, uh, Burke approached me way back in 2011. That's when we started working on this. It was a very long process and he had a dream. He wanted to tell his dad's story. And Burke, why don't you explain to Liz about that? Well, you know, it's, it's uh, dad was the founder of the Cowboys and he, he, he actually acquired the franchise in 50, 1959 startup uh -huh. season was in 1960 in the cotton bowl. And, and he uh, went on uh, and, and realized a further dream, which was to build a modern home for the team and which opened in 71. And it was like, uh, uh, and it, it, it stayed open. It was the home of the Cowboys for from then until 1971 through, uh, I guess it was 2008, the end of the season that year. And, uh -huh. and then subsequent to that, the, the uh, stadium was demolished in like 2010. 
and just mm-hmm. driving by, uh, I just began, and, and dad had already sold the, the, the team in 84, but mm-hmm. just driving by the location, it, it caused me to, uh, to, 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 to think that, you know, that, that people would just forget about it all. If right. it somehow right. was not. Yeah, because it's such an iconic place. I mean, everybody knew, takes notice. I mean, they knew when they drove by who, what it was, who it was, what was going on. And I um, mean, it was the first one of the, the first of its kind, wasn't it? Oh, very definitely. And, yeah. and, uh, and so it was at that time that I was afraid, concerned about that and, and mm-hmm. began to look into uh, uh, pulling, uh, try to you know, tell its story. Right. Tell the story. I knew I, I knew I couldn't. I could do the research, and, and we ended up with a collaboration. But I knew I could do the research, and had a lot of background, a lot of dad's friends, and 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 fellow you know business people, whatnot that we could turn to. Uh-huh. But what I needed, somebody could pull the story together and write it, and that's when uh, I, I hooked up with uh, with Alan. Uh, Part of, yeah, with Mike Granberry. I was going to say uh, Alan Peppard. I first, Alan, <laughs> I, I first approached Alan Peppard, who was also a journalist with uh, the news, sure. and uh, he thought it over, but not. It wasn't something that I, I think at the time was something he could dedicate time to, but he knew had worked for years with uh, Michael Granberry, mm-hmm. and and recommended him, and so we we spoke and and uh, were able to pull up, make a deal and. And the yeah. rest is history. Yeah, for sure. And it, it, it does. It's a long process sometimes, isn't it, Michael and Burke both? I mean, you know, people talk all the time about writing a story in a week or writing it, you know, not not in my mind. If you want to seriously tell a story, you know, it takes time and it takes research. And like you say, sometimes it's years, you know, to get it all together and to make sure it all fits together and it r- flows and you know, you a lot of times you're moving stuff around, you know, in that editing process. And so we tell people, we want people to know, because this is kind of a show for authors or people that want to be an author. And that's why we shared some of those tips earlier. But, you know, we want people to know everybody does it different. And just because I write a children's book, maybe in, you know, in, in three or four months or six months, Sometimes when you write a longer novel like y'all are writing, you know, it may take years. It may take a lot of people. It takes three, four, five, ten years to to actually get something written and published and out in the marketplace. So what was the experience like for you, Michael? Because this is your first book, isn't it? Even though you have a author in your household. <laughs> right. That's right. Well, well, you know, Burke and I, um, you know, what was interesting about the process is where we we you know, one very big thing we have in common is we've been cowboy fans since uh, the team was founded in 1960. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, um, you know, obviously his dad founded the team and was the first owner, but my dad and I started going to the games in 1960 Mm -hmm. and uh, my whole family, we were, you know, we've always been um, cowboy fans, even though, um, you know, it's like being part of a family, right? Uh, in recent years, we've been aggravated with them in the way that you might get up <laughs> right. with family members, right? But, right, right. Uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, it was like uh, uh, Burke had already done a lot of research. He had a lot of files, um, and he had a list of people to talk to. And one of the things that was interesting was um, a lot of these money people or business people. Uh, that he recommended I call. I mean, they had fascinating stories. They had incredible things yeah. to say. And they, well, and they were all pretty much willing to talk to you, weren't they? I mean, I yeah, find we didn't, that when we didn't really, people, I don't they, recall they, anybody, you know, I don't recall anybody not being willing to talk to us. And a lot of these yeah. people, they had such incredible stories. And I said, well, um, have you ever been, you've never been interviewed by a newspaper or a magazine about this? And they said, <laughs> no. And uh, which that alone was fascinating to me. Right, astonishing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. but there were there were you know, like, like the book is actually many things. You know, it's a, it's a biography of Clint Jr. Uh, mm-hmm. Burke's dad. It's a little bit of a. It's a you know in the in the beginning of the book we kind of go into the entire Murkison family history. It's a his a full history of the Cowboys, mm-hmm. even going back to 1952. 
um, when he first wanted to buy a team. And by the way, uh, Liz, that's a trivia question. Uh, we, we ask at public events, which I will ask right. you, there are okay. three, three current National Football League teams that used to make their home in Dallas in the Cotton Bowl. Can you name all three? Oh, I cannot. I am not. My brother could because my brother. Well, one of them is pretty easy. You could <laughs> probably I, name the, the, the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> there you go. And, and when, uh, from 1960 through 1962, uh, there was a team in the Cotton Bowl called the Dallas Texans. Right. Uh, I was going to say it was now the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs. Uh, but what That's most people good. don't realize in 1952, there was a team in the Cotton Bowl for one season called the Dallas Texans also. And that franchise is currently the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, wow. A broke dad lost out on the chance to buy that team. That opportunity went instead to a man named Carol Rosenblum, who uh -huh. bought what was left of that franchise, moved it to Baltimore, where it became the Baltimore Colts for many years. Uh -huh. And then a new owner uh, from the Irsay family moved it to Indianapolis, where it is now. But there was a lot of uh, amazing history. But we also wanted, one of the things that I wanted to do was kind of make it relevant to today. And, and the, the, the common thread throughout the book is the concept of the stadium. Burke's dad really was responsible for creating the prototype of the modern stadium, stadium. You know, which yeah. has become a revenue stream for many owners. But I think Burke would agree with me in many cases, this has gone a little crazy. And, um, uh, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, I mean, you have these very, you have high school stadiums now. That right. Are, spending tens of millions of dollars on stadiums. Yeah. So really we wanted to focus on, on the stadium. And it was interesting because in, in 1966, which was the Cowboys first winning season, the cotton bowl, which was built in 1930 was one of the league's newer stadiums. Right. I mean, there was one stadium <laughs> that was built in the 1800s. Oh, wow. and, uh, it was uh, so you know, Burke's dad really changed the uh, dynamics of the league in yeah. creating or, or making the stadium uh, not only a pleasant place to watch a game aesthetically, but also making it an economic engine, which it certainly right. is today. And one more point I'll make about that is we had a two hour interview with Jerry Jones, who was kind of the first in creating the super opulent stadium, that being AT&T Stadium. Uh, which has since been supplanted by SoFi Stadium in L.A. But Jerry had a really interesting quote. He said um, when he bought the team in 89, he felt like, you know, the stadiums in terms of revenue were still in the bottom quartile is the word he used of, of revenue. And he wanted to elevate that. He wanted to put that in the in the first quartile. In other words, right. make it make it maybe the number one revenue stream for an owner, which for owners. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. That's interesting. Well, Burke, let me ask you, what's your, what's your first memory of, of the team and of playing? I mean, I'm sure you're multiple at multiple games or down on the fields and, you know, what, what was it like to be, you know, that close with some of those great guys that played all those years? Oh, it's, it's it was really amazing. And, and early on, uh, I actually went to, uh, as a youngster, went to uh, uh, a couple of the training camps, uh -huh. and uh -huh. it was, uh, you know, real. It was really fun because you're kind of just around these people, you know, day to day kind of thing, and around right, the coaches. Yeah. And, and actually, Tom uh, uh, Tom Landry, the coach, his son Tom Landry Jr. was. It turned out with just my age, and we ended up going to school together. Yeah, and, and got wow. to know each other and spent time at, at training camp together. I didn't, he's. Oh, oh we lost him. <laughs> we lost Sorry him. He'll come that. back. That's okay. Uh, I didn't, I didn't. Uh, so I didn't have that, that privilege, you know, spent, but I would go to a couple of week, couple of weeks at a time out to several of the training camps and go to the, uh, some of the uh, away games, the exhibition games. I remember uh -huh. one particularly exciting one was, uh, we ended up in uh, one year up in Cleveland at a, uh, a double header. And uh, <laughs> it was kind of fascinating where the Cowboys played in the first of two games. I think we played Detroit. I think I recall properly. And then as mm -hmm. our, our game, the Cowboys game was winding down or as it closed, just almost 
minutes after it ended, here come the the the, the Cleveland Browns uh, marching on the field to play the second uh, the second game, the second of two games. It's really kind of fascinating and interesting. Right, too fun, too fun. Well, what does you know? What was the hardest part? about writing the book was it was it just trying to get all the pieces together and to to because i'm sure it was so much information yeah that you had to just you know make smaller just because of time i mean i'm sure you could have wrote a thousand page book but you right. know it's hard to get somebody to buy that so uh was that one of the struggles or was it something else well, I, I think, uh, I mean, you know, I had never written a book before, but I'd written a lot of, you know, magazine length pieces, long form uh -huh. pieces, long -form for, pieces for newspapers and magazines. But, but yes, I mean, it, it, you know, Berg did a great job of assembling a tremendous amount of information. Then I did interviews as well and, and did research on my on my own. So we had a ton of material, not all of which we could use. Right. And um the thing that finally represented kind of a breakthrough uh, for me is something I already knew, but it, it really helped in this process. And that was, you know, the, 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 the timeline, particularly with nonfiction, the timeline is your friend. I mean, you read any great work of nonfiction yeah. and there's a timeline there. Right. And, and, you know, by, by adhering to the timeline, by sticking to that, being faithful to that, then you can just kind of, um, you know, it's almost like the timeline is like a Christmas. The highlights, yeah. yeah, and then you can start putting ornaments on, you know, right. later. But the timeline is the thing that really anchors the story. And, uh -huh. and you know, there was quite a long timeline in, in this case, but right. uh, one, that, one that even predated 1960. Uh, and um, so that was very helpful. And, and then the other thing that I learned a long time ago was... Um, uh, back in 1980, I had the when I was covering the NBA, I had the pleasure of meeting the great writer uh, David Halberstam, who wrote so many books. The late great David Halberstam, and one of the things he told me about nonfiction, and you could really, you can really see this in his work. I recommend his work even today. Is um, you know, to a large extent, nonfiction is a series of profiles. You know, you're profiling people, and there were so many incredible personalities starting with Burke's dad who was an absolutely mm -hmm. incredible character and personality mm -hmm. and then you had so many others along the way and so you end up you know you end up kind of profiling these people and describing them as individuals to the reader mm -hmm. and 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 then in the and you do that with, though within the framework of the timeline and so that right. uh, that uh, that really helps and then you can kind of because of the timeline, you can really kind of see the arc of the story and um, where it's going. And where it's going. Well, uh, Burke, what was, what's one of your favorite stories or favorite chapters, maybe? would be a better way to, is there something that, that, that you're really, uh, that had to go in no matter what, that, you know, we, we had to tell this story? <laughs> Did, did, he, did he hear that? Uh, he I don't think he heard it. it. We got, he got dropped off. Well, that's okay. We'll, we'll come back on here in a minute. So the book is called A Hole in the Roof. And in the subtitle is, can you give me the rest of it, Michael? I should have wrote it. Oh, let's see what it is. Let's see. The 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 Dallas Cowboys, Clint Murkison Jr. Jr. and the stadium that changed American sports forever. Yeah. So. Yeah. So like you say, it's, it's, it's that whole... Um, you know, I'm a history buff, so and, the, and being from Dallas, that was especially of interest to me. And and just you know, growing up and not not necessarily being close to those things, but knowing about it, you know, hearing about it, driving by obviously the stadium. My brother and my dad went to games just like you, as we were talking about earlier. My dad was a varsity baseball coach and the JV football coach at one of the local uh, Dallas ISD and. Uh, and he was the only uh, DSD coach to win a state baseball championship. And so sports was a big thing. My, but we played more baseball than we did football because of that. Mm -hmm. But my cousin, Burton Lawless, 66, played. You that know, was your cousin, Burton Lawless? Yeah. yeah. So, so, of course, my dad, when it, Burton was playing, my dad and my brother went to the games a lot. I was... Yeah. Uh, you know, I was not as interested and they didn't ask, I, they probably didn't even ask me to go, but 
he was a he was a great player. Yeah, what a what a great thing. It's so you know so so sad when he got hurt, but you know he came made it to came around. You know, came to the other side of it, and so had a great great life and you know and doing other things. So, but he uh, I know he appreciated that that chance and that opportunity he had the years he got to play. And then I'm, you know, I'm involved in Dallas and nonprofits in the African American Museum. So I know Billy Joe Dupree. I've met Preston Perry, you know, on a person on a bunch of occasions. A lot of those guys that played during those years uh, for Tom Landry. And like you say, before the the money got big. And then you know Emmett Smith and you know those guys too uh, were always involved in the community activity that we did. So it was nice to you know to see some of those guys and meet those guys personally. But, but it's just astonishing, I think, the impact that, that football has on America and this team. Don't, don't you think? I mean, I'm sure, Burke, you don't go anywhere that you don't – somebody doesn't talk about the team. <laughs> Can you go well, anyplace? And- yes, it's kind, of, it's kind of crazy. I mean, it's like, you know, it was something that, that, that it was during the era that dad's era in their 60s that it really caught on with tv uh-huh. and and then and it's just like continued to skyrocket in popularity skyrocket. it's really it's just it's yeah. unbelievable how popular it's gotten and uh, continues to grow so it's it's fabulous yeah for sure for sure well well i appreciate i was telling michael uh, you know we, uh, that history was so important and we tell a lot of like western history and multicultural history because i'm also in the rodeo business as you can see behind me i write about western history and and characters it's those personalities it's those people that sometimes were ordinary people but they lived extraordinary lives because of their choices you know, yeah. just like your dad, your dad made a, an, a, a choice. You know, he made an active decision to build a new stadium right. to, to generate revenue, you know, an additional revenue for the team in some form or fashion, um, you know, and, and that you just got to have vision for that. You know, that like you say, that doesn't just come to everybody to, you know, any guy on the street and it doesn't just happen overnight either yeah, it, was, sure it, was a, it, long was it was interesting because dad uh it was i think uh it was always a passion of his to build a stadium to showcase the team and he it's it's interesting because he 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 waited he knew the team had to survive before he could get to the stadium <laughs> but in uh in 63 the beginning that or that the the uh off season 63 the Texans, his the primary, you know, the the, the Texans, the, the uh, Lamar Hunt's Texans and the and Dad's Cowboys were playing head to head in the Cotton Bowl, and nobody could really survive in that environment. But finally, uh, uh, Lamar moved his team to Kansas City, and that at that point, Dad knew there was an opening for his team for the Cowboys to actually truly become profitable, and it was at that moment that he turned towards beginning to look to build a new stadium. So it was all timing in his yeah. mind, but he had always wanted to do a new, to do a stadium. It was really a, a, a challenge for him and one that he uh, uh, was, was ready for when, ready it, when for, the opportunity yeah. came. When it came, came by and made it, it made it happen, you know, and, and I'm sure it took a lot of risk and had a lot of conversations with you know people all oh, across yeah. Because, you know, it's not something you, you know, it's not something you just go out and buy a piece of land and build. You got to deal with the city. You got to deal with the county. You got to deal with the state. I mean, you know, I'm you know, all he, went to, of- he went to war with the, the city of Dallas, <laughs> with the, just the mayor and, and Eric Johnson and right. Robert Cullum, who's the head of the uh, one of the mayor's best friends and was head of the state fair. And, and yeah. they would yep. they would they would have no. uh you know they were just wouldn't wouldn't couldn't couldn't buy into dad's vision and that right. caused them to after a lot of a lot of blood sweat and tears and caused him to shift to uh to irving right uh, right which, yeah which in, which in his mind irving was a the, the site that they selected and irving was superior to a downtown stadium for the fans mm-hmm. themselves but he right. felt like a downtown stadium and the uh the performing hearts uh, center and and museums that he hoped to to uh, to support, to, yeah. to support and bring in uh, would have done so much more for for Dallas. Yeah, for the city. 
you're right in yeah. terms of raising its profile and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Well, I think, and I think you know, it's a shame because it's kind of the the good and bad. I mean, it's kind of the 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 two sided coin. of Fair Park is, you know, we love it, we love the history, love, we love the Art Deco, but also, like you say, keeps a lot of other things from going on because of that. So, um, well, yeah, you know, it did for a long time. Yeah, and for a long time. That's changed now, but um, in in but the people that were back in Fair Park at the time, they just couldn't, and that included the mayor and Robert Cullum and the city council. Yeah, they just uh, you know they just couldn't see beyond it, which is right. it, it's almost like a tragic failure. Yeah, in hindsight. In the hindsight, yeah, for sure. Well, Michael, what was uh, what was your favorite story of all of it, or was there a favorite interview or somebody that y'all talked to over the the, the course of writing this and editing and rewriting, I'm sure. <laughs> well, there, there, there's so many, uh, so many examples, but, you know, I, one of the things that, uh, uh, you know, that I thought was kind of fun was uh, th there were a lot of opportunities for humor. Uh, I mean, Burke's dad was really a funny guy so and funny he guy. loved practical jokes and the way that he actually got the franchise, he, he essentially, bribed the uh, Washington owner um, uh, who would not, who did not want to vote for, for Dallas being included uh, as a franchise and it required a unanimous vote. Mm -hmm. So um, um, Clint managed to acquire the rights to the Washington team song. And uh, <laughs> this guy H seems Hail to, to the Redskins. Hail yeah. to the Redskins. Although we don't, we don't say that word anymore. <laughs> so, uh, you know, hail to the R's. Anyway, the uh, it's that it's kind of ruined the story. You know? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, the, you know, he loved. Uh, I mean, George Preston Marshall just you know worshipped that song, and right. it's incredible <laughs> that he he wasn't on top of the copyright, but he wasn't, and um, yeah. so it ended up, you know, through a series of events, it ended up in in Clint's control, <laughs> and he said he would give it sell it back to him or give it back to him if he would go ahead and vote for the Cowboys, which he did. And, you know, there were so many odd characters like George Preston Marshall being one. And then uh, a lot of funny stories, zany stories. Um, it was, it, it was really uh, interesting to uh, delve what into. About that? Mike, why don't you tell the one yeah. about uh, Tony Dorsett, TD 33. Yeah, now that involved the motorcycle, right? I mean, yeah, yeah like uh, actually, you may you may remember that better. Like he he Landry did not. Okay, one of the players got injured on a motorcycle, right? Right, right. Uh -huh. but, but, yeah, yeah, we we I forgot when we drafted TD thirty three Tony Dorsett, yeah, but yeah, several yeah. years prior to that, I think it was in the uh, going. I think it was the seventy one season. We had right. players they were out on the weekend on on their day off on the Mondays. They were out. Uh, <laughs> Uh, motorbiking uh, out on somebody's ranch, yeah. And, and one of the key players, the lineman, uh, shattered his leg, and 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 it just almost almost killed Landry. But he was able right. to bring a bring somebody in to replace him. We still went to the Super Bowl and won. But uh, several years later than that, wasn't it around seventy seven, Mike? I think we I we, think so. we drafted Tony yeah. Tony Dorsett, right. uh -huh. and and Dad got wind of it. I mean, and he was certainly excited but he uh he customized a dirt bike and <laughs> and uh had uh had, had painted it in cowboy colors and had tony <laughs> dorsett on the on each side and on the uh the little license plate was td33 right, he, right. Had, he had him he had somebody he had he had somebody park it in park tom landry's parking space out at the training center and so he was <laughs> It was kind of. I love it. I love it. And I, at one point, Tony, I, he actually played with a broken foot or ankle or something, didn't he? And one of the, I mean, I, I remember something talking with him about something. And, you know, who was really, this? Who was Tony, this? I think, didn't he? I think he actually played, you know, one of the championship games where he actually got hurt but didn't know it. He just because he said, like, I had to keep well, running, I can't, you know? Yeah, I don't, I'm sure that, I'm sure something like that happened. Those, those players just got to keep. Yes. keep playing you know and especially when sure. you're that close and you're in the championship game and i think it was really close to you know it's when he was close to you know getting you know going over the the uh you know making his um, um yard yardage you know he was about to break the record or something and he was like right. i just i gotta keep playing you know and and that's uh -huh. what those guys are you know they just they just i think they would have 
like you say, we may have some issues now, you know, with head injuries and stuff. But I can tell you, I, every, everybody I know that played would still play. You Isn't know, I, you know, there's just something about the competition and something about this, you know, sport that brings out, you know, and I think it's camaraderie and I think it's team. And I, I think there's something about being a part of that. I mean, even with the newspaper, Michael, don't you say, I mean, it, everybody down there at the news, I feel like y'all are a team. You know, and all these years, yeah, we had such great writers. We had such great, uh, you know, editors and people, you know, columnists and stuff. And, you know, I, I miss that that some of that's going away, you know, because it, it well, they was love, a special uh, time. They love Michael down there. I know that. And that really, I think it that was uh, uh, confirmed when in introducing the book, the publication date was early December. And they they did a full page, uh, full page uh Ad, not and, ad, but the cover, cover shot or, or uh -huh. photograph with the, with our, our book mentioned, uh -huh. and it's basically it was uh, in honor to I think Michael and all the you know all the all the years that he's worked down there and the friends he's made. It yeah. was fabulous to have that kind of experience. Well, that was very helpful to us. I say, and we've both been very touched by how how warmly people are responding to the book and how much they're liking right. it. We've done several public appearances and I, I was just in Eatsy's the other night and the pizza chef like cornered <laughs> me and said, I love this book. I just love this book. And, you know, he said he had grown up in Dallas and the stories yeah. meant so much to him. And it yet so he, was surprised. he learned new things from it that he didn't know before. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, it, it's been a real pleasure in that regard. We've gotten, it, it has been received uh, very warmly by cowboy fans and uh, we, uh, we, we appreciate that. So uh, there, there, I was even um, I contribute music um, on a regular basis to this podcast, the Tony Kornheiser show. Tony uh -huh. is on ESPN every day. Uh -huh. And uh, and uh, uh, I was on there briefly. And uh, and this guy wrote in a couple of people wrote in letters to the show, which were so nice, uh, you know, about their cowboy memories. And right. Their memories. And all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's really fun. So um, it's A Hole in the Roof, and it's available on Amazon, and it's by Burke Murchison. I'm going to spell that for you, those of you that are listening to this as a podcast later. It's B-U-R-K Murchison, M-U-R-C-H-I-N-S-O-N, and Michael Granberry, like <laughs> And so that's Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-G-R-A-N-B-E-R-R-Y. Michael Granberry, Burke Merchantson, their book, Hole in the Roof. I mean, our time goes so fast, we may have to have you guys can, can come I, back on again. So, yeah, I, we kind of got I, one last minute here. Give us oh, your I add something, can I add something, please? Yes, sir. Okay, it's Merkison, like a Merkinson. K. Merkinson. And there's no Merkinson. N. There's no N. There's not. It's not a C H I N S O N. It's I S O N. So Merkison. I S O N. No and N. It's like All it's right. like a K. That's very important. It is very important. Yeah, that would make Dad really upset to have. To say, <laughs> well, we'll change it. We'll buy, we'll change it in all the notes and on all okay. the stuff. But okay. I'm available on Amazon. But how else is there another way that somebody can get in touch with y'all if they'd like y'all to come out and speak or talk about the book or do a book reading or a book review or anything like have, that? Have, have book will travel, right, Mike? That's right. You know, they could uh, contact our publisher, Texas okay. A&M. Um, uh, press and yeah. and, and yeah. you know if they wanted us to come speak or something like that they could reach out to them and okay. um, you know that's probably the best way i'm also on uh twitter and and facebook and um you know but but burke is the god of social media i mean he's, he's, <laughs> he's unbelievable so uh, yeah. I will never. I'm still know. trying to figure that out, just like yeah. I am my cell phone. Exactly. I know. That's I'm that's challenged. Perfect. I'm challenged. Yeah. Well, it's it's great to have y'all on. I, we appreciate so much that y'all would spend the time and energy because as a writer, I know it's a lot. That there's a lot more involved. And there are a lot of moving parts to publishing. Um, I've been in this a long time myself. My mother had a Christian bookstore in Dallas. So in addition, while my dad was, you know, was a coach and. He was at uh, Samuel for over 33 years. Actually, at Old Pleasant Grove High School, he started. But he loved his coaching, and he loved the school and the kids, and he loved Dallas. And 
like I say, uh, we've always been cowboy fans in our family. And I know there's so many people across the country that are, you know, are going to love this book and are going to want to get a copy. Well, Mike, so, Mike, has done, Mike has done a fabulous job bringing it all together. Oh, well, thank and you. He's, really, he's, really, he's inter, interwove the cowboy history with the stadium and with Dallas history. And it makes yeah. for just, it's really a fascinating read for anybody. Yeah. That, thank you, Bert. You know, right. I think so. Well, I appreciate it so much. Like you say, good luck to you all. We hope you have a great uh, time with this. We know you're going to sell a lot of these books and we're going to do what we can to help you do that. And so um, we're to the, we're over our time, but I always go over a little bit. So uh, I'm just going to go, go with it. And so this has been episode 30 with authors, Merck Merchinson and Michael Granberry. Did I get it right? No, you're wrong again, but that's okay. (laughs) All right, tell her, tell her, tell me one more time. Murkison. 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 Murk- Murkison. Murkison. See that Burke and Murkison. Yeah, you're getting, getting it down now. Okay. We got, we got Mur- a comp- Murkison and Michael we Granberry. Got, we- well, we appreciate you guys so much being on the show with us today. And we appreciate you writing this book and putting this out there and telling the stories because our stories are important. Sure. And, you know, they, they <laughs> impact so many people's lives. And so, uh, we just wish you the best of luck, and okay, we appreciate you. you being on the We appreciate adventure. the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you, Liz. We really you appreciate bet. it. So we'll talk to you guys next week. We're here every Tuesday at 5 p.m. for the author adventure, and so be sure to go back. You can watch this show on the recording. It'll be live on our YouTube channel uh, tomorrow, and so you can always come back and listen to that, and we just uh, appreciate y'all so much, and we'll see you next week. Thank bye you. bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.